This is Marty Lewis. It's cold as hell. And this is the Desert Dogs. Previously on the Desert Dogs. As you can see, we're now at the wilderness boundary. And we're at Forgotten Pass, 9,600 feet. I came across this, uh, this cabin. It's made of stone. I'm not sure, but this could be Frenchie's cabin. It is a beverage. In this episode of the Desert Dogs, we're going to be doing a tour of the Mojave National Preserve. And we'll be visiting Mid-Hills Campground, hole in the wall and woods wash woods wash is our main objective and we are going to be looking for some petroglyphs and pictographs and today we have biologist danny Cuellar, historian richard elliott our resident psychologist stephanie perry and biologist marty lewis and boo For all our trekking about the Mojave Desert, the Desert Dogs have never really ventured into the East, like the Mojave National Preserve. And yet, we've heard so much about it. This eastern part of the Mojave, known as the Low Desert, is filled with beautiful geologic formations, wide-ranging varieties of animals and plants, and a rich history. I, Desert Dog founder Andrew Perry, found out about a really cool petroglyph site called Woods Wash, and so I decided to use that as our reason to head east and explore the Mojave National Preserve. This time, we have the pleasure of bringing a psychologist. She didn't really say much to us, but instead just observed us. She said she wanted to observe the effects of the desert on the male psyche. fighting a bunch of these caterpillars. This is actually one of the biggest ones. Um, there's a lot of little small ones around here. And one of the reasons is because we had all these torrential rains recently. This is a perfect timing for monsoon season. And everything is obviously much greener than you normally get, but you also get a bunch of insects. Well, you see on the back, on the back portion of the caterpillar, you get that little horn. And that's a good indicator of a sink, sink moth. Any, uh, anything, uh, what's something interesting about sphinx? So, Sphinx moths don't have much of an impact here in the desert, but they're known to be um, a garden pest. So you probably heard them as hornworms because they have the little horn at the end. Um, they eat tomatoes, <laughs> tobacco, and, and other things like that. So um, yeah, they're known as, as garden pests, but out here in the desert, oh, wow. they don't do much harm. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, the spittle bug is a... Um, the beetles bite? It's a true bug. No, well, some of them do. Uh, I think this is rabbit rush. And uh, yeah, so what the what the spittle bug does is it'll it'll live on the, the branch and then it'll create this kind of like gooey. Looks like somebody kind of hawked a loogie on the plant and everything. And it basically uses it as kind of a a home essentially. Uh, it's it's liquid. It's it's. Is there anything in it? There is. There's a bug that's in it. So if I was to take this and kind of move it around, see that. Oh, that yeah. black thing right there, or that, that little dot, that's that's the bug that's creating all the spittle. Right there. That's weird. Yep. And the no, spittle acts as, um, as kind of a cooling agent. It's liquid, so in the desert heat, it'll help cool the bug that's inside there. It's white, so it's reflective. It reflects a lot of sun rays and everything. After hole in the wall, we headed toward the Mid-Hills campground which we designated as a base camp for this trip. It's plastic and then plastic only. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, all sticking to something in the middle of the power mower and a spark plug on the top. And that's it. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. And they Hello. steal stuff and break stuff. Park Ranger walked out after me uh, a year ago. Stephanie a Perry, psychologist. <clears throat> Just got here to the campsite, 
and there's all these flies flying around and uh, one of the species of flies flying around is this guy right here this is from the family Acilidae or robber flies and the cool thing about robber flies is I don't know if you can see but if you look at those mouth parts they basically look like like a, a giant chisel and what these guys will do is they'll actually catch other flies mainly and and bees and wasps mainly mid-flight so in the air they'll they'll track the wasps and bees mid-flight and they'll just basically intercept them in the middle of flight and basically take those mouth parts puncture it and they just eat it robber flies that's what they do well, let me get a nice close robbing your bees out of the air we're actually nice guys and so when we saw someone with a flat we helped him out Choking a baby. <laughs> 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 I turn you in. <laughs> what are they called? Molester hucks? Harris yeah. hucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like one of the very few raptors that, that uh they, 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 they hunt in groups. Wow. Yeah. What? The range isn't even here. Look at that. That's a range. Not even in California. I still don't even know if they're Harris Hawks. No, but it looks a lot like it. Watch. Hold on. Let me go to pictures. Oh, shit, it is. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Look. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's, that is. That is oh, a Harris Hawk, yeah. Oh, wow. Go, 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 go over there. Straight to the right, at 1 yeah. o'clock. Let's, let's go up closer. Stop. Hook that up into your uh, so to your speaker. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. Do it. That'd be awesome. They, they could come towards us, though. That's one of the reasons they do it. It'll make for good footage <laughs> if, 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 it, if they bite. Oh, okay. They heard you. Guys, but we're also jackasses. Do it again. There's a flight. <laughs> Where do you see him? Over there. He landed? Oh no. That's <laughs> 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 Oh funny. <laughs> And finally, our biggest tourist stop of the day was the famous Kelso Dunes, well known for singing a single G note to desert wanderers who happened to walk across its sandy swells. So, I guess we have to find one with a steep face. When I well, did the big tall one, I went in between right there and I got in the saddle and then I walked the backbone to the top. And then you can see everybody sliding down the middle over there. But right now those are bushes, they're not people. I looked at, at, uh, with the uh, binoculars. But they come down by those bushes up there near the top and slide down that middle area. Here's, here's a good lizard track right here. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Oh, the, the, the tail. Wait, do not step on that. The, just that. <laughs> see the tracks going that way? Yeah, we can find some sidewinder tracks, that would be cool. Oh, shit. That was stupid. It's like an old western. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Your turn, Andy. Okay, so what's in it in this bottle is a, a velvet ant. Uh, Andy caught it, and the reason it's in. in in this bottle, not in my hand, because it's actually one of the most painful stings you get out there. So it's actually the third mo most painful sting. The first being the bullet ant, second tarantula hog that you do see see out here in the desert, and the third would be 
the vulva net. So basically what they do, they would bite you first to get a hold of you and then they sting you. So this is what you see, um, normally velvet dance, the ones you see out, out and about are females, female queens. So they're looking for a colony for them to colonize, but um, when, when, when they're first out, they have wings and they eventually lose them once they find that colony. So you, you might see it as an actual ant. It's actually more related to uh, vespids, which are um, like wasps and bees. And uh, like I said, it's one of the most painful bites out there. So that's one of the reasons it's in here and not in my hand. No sounds for us today because the interior of the dunes was still wet from the recent rains. But at the nearby Kelso Museum, they did have an exhibit. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Desert Dogs, where we hike to Woods Wash and seek out one of the most elusive petroglyph panels in the Eastern Mojave. I'm Andrew Perry. Let's try and keep it reasonable out there. It seems like the further I go, the worse it gets. Like, what the hell? How am I supposed to do this? Well, we're at the what's known as the Baghdad Cafe. We're in 1987. They shot the movie Baghdad Cafe. Um, it's actually here in Newberry Springs. The real Baghdad Cafe was 50 miles east of here in what was Baghdad, California. The movie itself was, uh, the director was Percy Alden. He's a German. It was a comedy. And they actually, they won several awards in 1988 and 89. They won several awards for the film. Uh, it was loosely based on the original Baghdad Cafe. Uh, this Baghdad Cafe was originally called the Sidewinder and about 1991 they changed the name to Baghdad Cafe and it, as a result we get a lot of tourism here now uh, from France and everywhere. You guys seen the movie right? Yeah. 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 Uh, shoot, this year we get about four or five hundred people every day from France. 75 percent. But actually we think actually she probably gets about seven to eight hundred during the summer. Eight hundred people. Yeah. But usually about one o'clock it starts getting full. Like today we already got about well we get about four buses right? Yeah, about 200 people already from France. But then after 1 o'clock, we, we'll probably get about another 500. Probably 700 today. This is a dog card. Okay. Is this the other card here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, this one's yours. Cool, thanks. So, are you guys going to film out here? Yeah, you guys can go ahead and film. No. Yeah. It's all right. Documentary like yeah. that. And then, you guys, if you like, you can go behind the counter. Yeah, that'd be cool. Hold the Route 66 sign, and we'll take your photo, or you guys can take your photo. Or... Go. Okay, so for the Backpack Cafe, I'll give it, I, I have a feeling I'll probably give it like around five because. I mean, it is like a tourist trap. I mean, that's what you go for. See the pictures, the ambiance, the people there. The food itself, I, I expect it to be a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. It was somewhat decent, so I'll give it like a five. Yeah, I agree with Dan because I read some Yelps on it, and some people said food is horrible, but the food was good enough for being out in the middle of the desert, and uh, I, I give it about, about a six. I'll probably give it a five as well. Um, because the food wasn't all that appetizing to me. Um, it was good enough to, to eat, I guess, but not good enough to enjoy. So, yeah, that's, that's why I did it. It's, it's only there for the tourists, and it's feeding off the European tourist demographic too, so, which is fine with me. Go ahead and make your money off more. For the Baghdad Cafe, I think I'm gonna give it about a seven. It was, uh, the food portions were small, the 
hamburgers were, you know, whatever, but it was kind of uh, cute.